Mabuhai, aloha, hafa day, hello. I'm Miss Jessica. I'm a children's instructor and research specialist for Howard County Library System. Welcome to Make With Me. Today, I want to do something really special, and that's highlight one of my favorite authors and illustrators, Eric Carl. He recently passed away, and so I thought this would be a really wonderful opportunity to share with you some books that we have in our collection that you might not be familiar with. I think everyone is pretty familiar with The Very Hungry Caterpillar. It was originally published in 1969. It's been published in over 66 different languages and has sold like over 50 or 60 million copies worldwide, which is just incredible. So Eric Carl made a name for himself by creating things. And those things became wonderful stories and ideas and precious pictures and picture books that we all enjoy today. Our library system has over 160 items that feature Eric Carl and or his creation. So I hope that you will visit us at hclibrary.org and use your barcode and PIN number to request some of those materials now. Okay, so the series I wanna share with you is actually an Eric Carl and Friends series. <laughs> there's, there's a number of books in this um, collection, but I want to share with you the four that I have in hand. The first one is, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite food? And what's your favorite bug? Can you guess what Eric Carl's favorite bug is? Yeah, it's the very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> what's wonderful about these books is each book features a number of other picture book artists that you might be familiar with and some that you might not be. And it will really introduce you to wonderful, different styles of art from these incredible creators. You might know Eric Carl, but do you know Juju Morales? Do you know Dan Santet, Nick Brule, Denise Fleming? Some of these names are familiar. And Mo Willems? Yes, all of these artists and more are featured in these books answering these questions about what is their favorite food, animal, bug, color. It's a really wonderful, I would say, study in artists in picture books. And I think it relates really well to what Eric Carle did in his life. And he established this really cool museum. It's the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art. I've been there a number of times. I have to tell you, it is one of my favorite places um, on this side of the country. So if you ever get a chance to go visit the Eric Carl Museum, please do. It's so fun. They have a couple of different galleries and exhibitions are going through all the time featuring different picture book artists. They have a wonderful library that you can explore and read and listen to stories sometimes. They even have a really cool art studio where you can go and make things. So check them out. I believe it's carlmuseum.org. And they have a couple of online exhibitions going on right now. Also, today we're going to make something we are going to replicate to some degree how Eric Carle creates his own work or has created his work in the past. You can go to eric-carle.com to look at his FAQs and see a video of him doing all of the art himself where he's painting and cutting and stenciling and putting dummy books together. It's really cool. So be sure to try that as well when you get a chance. So without further ado, let's make something. Ta-da! 
Let's take a look at the materials I have to make my very own Very Hungry Caterpillar today. First of all, I have placed down some wax paper so that I can clean up my mess quickly. I've got some paint. You can use watercolors or whatever kind of paint you have at home. Some liquid glue. You can use glue sticks. Glue sticks are great for little hands and it's a little bit less messy. I have some crayons and color pencils and markers, some sponges that I can cut out and make stamps with. So this will be when you, the responsible adult, comes in and helps with that. Also have some foam brushes, regular brush. I've got a fork because I think that'll make some cool shapes and lines. I found a whisk. I thought that would be kind of fun to roll in the paint. I have a lemon and a potato just randomly on my counter, so I thought, why not? I got a pair of scissors to help with any cutting that we might be doing. Adults, again, that's when you would step in if your child does not have safety scissors or is still learning to use scissors. Please, please, please be there to assist. I've got some of this stuff like shelf liner and some bubble wrap and packing material because I have just finished moving and lots of this packing paper. It's not really tissue paper per se, but it will work. <laughs> and then our canvas for today where we will put our creations is this. It's just a tissue box that was going to be recycled, but now is going to be our canvas for a very hungry caterpillar. And then something really important to have if you're creating art is your muse. And I have these really <laughs> wonderful magnets that I got when I was visiting the Eric Carl Museum. So I've got the very hungry caterpillar. And after he's eaten a lot, and then the butterfly he turns into. And then this really pretty sun that reminds me of Eric Carl himself. His favorite color happens to be yellow. So I thought that would be nice to add on our little journey to making something fun today. As always, when attempting any kind of making activity, Please be sure to have a responsible adult with you so that you can have fun while creating something that's yours. Fun ends with safety ends. Let's get started. So the process is pretty simple. Create your own works of art that you are then going to cut up and create creatures with. In this case, we're making the very hungry caterpillar, a butterfly, and a sun. All I'm doing is filling my packing paper with lots of color whatever I have lying around and experimenting with what materials make, what shapes and what kinds of patterns I can come up with. And what's really fun about this is that there's no right or wrong answer. You just keep making something and you keep moving forward and trying new things.
All right, so my paintings, my stampings, my prints have all dried. And now what I'm going to do to make this a little easier on myself is I'm going to outline the shapes that I wanna cut out. Um, I'm gonna start over here with my sun because we're gonna see what that looks like and see if I can create something that resembles this with the shapes that I have created on this page. So I've got my crayons just to give myself an outline to cut. Otherwise you can freehand this uh, with the scissors if you like, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how you can just uh, do a little tracing, little circle, you know, that kind of thing so that you can cut around the shapes that you are trying to cut out as a guideline for those who are learning how to use scissors.
I just love making things and I would love to see what you're making at home. So if you're so inclined, take a picture of what you've created and send it to askhcls at hclibrary.org with the subject line, make with me. I can't wait to see what you've made. Let's review our series from Eric Carl and friends. What's your favorite animal? What's your favorite color? What's your favorite food? And what's your favorite bug? These books are great for ages four to eight or preschool to third grade, accessible, easy, fun, a nice way to do a study on various illustrators who you've probably read their picture books, right? So this is a really neat way to learn more about these illustrators and really delve into the differences between their art and see if you can replicate their styles too. Here's another picture book I think that you will really enjoy. It's entitled Little Green by Keith Baker. What's really cute about this book is that there is a little artist who's painting and is following this hummingbird and watching its flight patterns and mimicking that with their brush. So it's a really cute way and an organic way of learning technique an introduction to different shapes and lines. So very early math concepts for young people. And then another really cute thing in here, there's a caterpillar on every page. And I just thought this would be a perfect book to add with the Eric Carl series we talked about today. Again, this book is accessible uh, to preschoolers ages two to five. This is in our nonfiction section for children. It's Create with Maisie, a Maisie first arts and crafts book written and illustrated by Lucy Cousins. Maisie loves to make things and you can make things too. Here's a trend, can you tell? This book is accessible for ages four to eight years old. There are step-by-step -step instructions, very visual, really beautiful, easy to read easy to replicate so your child will experience the success in these projects and there's 16 or 17 projects to get through so I think you will really enjoy this one and finally a book for our older friends it's junior maker experiments to try crafts to create and lots to learn this happens to be on our summer reading list for grades two to three. Some of the projects in this book are accessible to those young as six years old. So don't be afraid <laughs> to check out this book if you've got a first grader in your home. There are 20 interactive activities, experiments, and crafts that you can explore in this book. Materials are easy and accessible and not too expensive. So I hope you can try your hand at this book, Junior Maker. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you will join me next time for more Make With Me. Bye.